now. Here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley, coming from you at a different angle today. Really excited about this. If you're looking to grow your show and you want to take it to the next level, hit me up, DM me, email me. Let me know what we can do. We can help you make your show look like this. If you're listening to this on the podcast, please like, share, and review it on Apple Podcast. Today, our guest is Paris Prinkevich. Paris is a fellow podcaster that I've known for a little bit of a while. We met in a podcast group. Her podcast is called Crooked Illness. Her aim is to help bring awareness to mental illness and help others understand they are not alone. Paris, welcome to the show. Wes, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here today and to dive into this with you. Yeah, it's pretty exciting to have you on here. We've been talking for, I think, almost a year now uh, is when I met I know. A, a couple people. It's and- been crazy. I feel like, I honestly feel like it's been longer, but it probably hasn't. But yeah, we got connected in that group and you know, I've been able, I've been fortunate enough to connect with you and so many just awesome, incredible other podcasters and, you know, collab with them and all these things. So I, I really like it how we got, got, got together. So. Yeah. And it's a pretty exciting thing, you know, and I think that that's what it is. We get to meet all these important or other people and connect with them and learn about them. And that's what I love about this. Are you in Arizona right now or? Yes, I am. Wow. I am actually in Flagstaff for the weekend right now. Yep. Doing a little snowboarding. You said, I didn't realize it snowed that much in uh, Arizona that they have a ski resort. That's how naive I am. (laughs) A lot of people were surprised by that. A lot of people. So don't feel bad. People were like, there's snow there. Like, what are you doing? Like, where is this? And I'm like, Flagstaff, like snowball, you know, second time in my life, snowboarding, (laughs) just trying it out, you know? Yeah. (laughs) And we get snow here in Idaho, so it's nothing new for me, but it was just, I'm going down there next month. And it was just, when I was down there, the reason I loved it so much was it was hot. It's not hot oh, here right now. It's winter. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm one of the, I feel like I'm one of the weird ones out here. Cause a lot of people usually who are from here do not like the heat as much. Like they'll complain more about it, but I love it. I love hot weather. Like I hate the cold. Yeah. I like to visit cold places for like a short period of time, but I don't, I don't like it really. So this is yeah. perfect. Arizona is the, you guys check it out. If you have not already, it's a great place. Yep. For sure. Hey, so before we get started here, let, can you just kind of give us a little bit of your background? I know your your podcast is around mental illness because it, it's kind of close to home for you. Can you tell us a little bit about why? Yes, um, I love that question. So the reason I launched my podcast, so I launched my podcast, it's called Crooked Illness in January of 2020. And the reason I launched it is because just like Wes said, it, the, the reason for launching it stems from my own personal story. So with crooked illness, there are two main perspectives that I get into. And it's the patient perspective, I call, and then the employee perspective. So at 19 years old, I was diagnosed with bipolar one disorder, hospitalized and struggling really, really badly just from inside the walls of that hospital at 19. And then at 23 years old, I graduated from college and I actually ended up accepting my first job at the very same clinic where I used to be a patient at and receive services at. So I kind of have seen things from both angles in terms of the stigma associated with mental health and mental illness and things like that. So I decided to launch this podcast just to really create a platform and a place to bring more conversations to the table surrounding these topics to make them more normalized and less stigmatized and to feature other people's stories and just incredible things like that. And it's been so much fun so far. So yeah. And that's what's really exciting about it. I think that the authentic part of that comes out because you've suffered through that and you know exactly how it is. It's in, and then now you've got your degree in psychology and then you also have an MBA as well. So what are you doing now in addition to the podcast? Yeah. So in addition to the podcast, so I actually decided to go back to school. So I graduated in 2018 from the University of Arizona. I got my bachelor's in psychology and then I decided I wanted to go back to school and get my MBA in healthcare administration to understand more of the business standpoint when it comes to healthcare administration, um, hospital coordination, patient care, things like that. So I did that and then during that process, I launched the podcast and I started working on this book. And this book uh, is something that I've been working on probably for two years now and I finally completed it. So I finally finished writing it and I am in the process right now of doing a lot of research on working on getting this published in 2021 so exciting because I honestly never thought I would be 
be able to write a book. And that was just because I just pushed it off for so long and put it off for so long and never made the time to commit to it. And I actually got it done. I'm very excited to bring that out into the world because it really features just the whole foundation on which Crooked Illness was founded on. And a lot of the things that I did to come out of the darkest places that I was in and really offer this to people who may be struggling, know someone who is struggling, or just wants to learn more in general about mental health, about just mental health struggles and things like that. So that is what is in the works right now. Yeah. And that's awesome. Being able to write that book, you know, I I kind of, I've, I've never really struggled with the mental illness or a lot of things that people struggle with. And so it's interesting to kind of hear that and understand it makes it a little bit easier for someone who hasn't struggled with that or doesn't know that they're struggling with that to have an idea of what it's like. And maybe, maybe they'll realize that there is an issue. You know, a lot of times people think that mental illness is like a shameful thing and you don't talk about it. And like you were talking about, you want to, you want people not to stigmatize it as something not to talk about. Why is that so important to talk about it? Yeah. So probably the the primary reason with that is just to let people know that if there's the option to talk about it, because for me, back when I was struggling at my worst, I basically was living with this facade and this facade of everything is okay. Everything is fine. Everything is great. And I never, I never um, really faced what I was dealing with. I never really wanted to get into it, talk about it. And I was terrified of talking about it because every conversation I've ever heard growing up related to mental health and mental illness was always, always had more of a negative connotation to it. And it just basically seemed like something that you wouldn't want to put out there or, tell people about. And I feel like, you know, by having more of these conversations, really encouraging people that, you know, this is normal, you guys, like all of us, you know, whether or not we've received a diagnosis or, you know, have personally struggled with a mental illness, you know, we all have days where we are not feeling our best. We are not in our best headspace. We are, we're dealing with something we're experiencing, you know, whether it be some kind of grief, some kind of loss, some kind of new beginning, we all have that, these moments. So letting people know that that's perfectly normal and okay to get into, to talk about, to dive into just makes people feel like they're not alone. And, and, and on, and a part of that, and also feeling like you're not alone, that you have a support system, that you have a community, that you have, you know, resources out there and things that you can explore and dive into to really pull yourself out of that place and into the place that you've always envisioned going to and being able to be a part of. Have you noticed one of the things like listening to that, and I kind of was thinking about some things while you were talking about it, but did you, do you think, you know, you said you were diagnosed at 19. Do you think that it was, I mean, you were diagnosed at 19. So how long were you living with it before people knew? And then when it happened, what did your, what was your family's thoughts when they realized and you realized that that's what the issue was? Yeah. So actually, so when I was 16 years old, I was actually misdiagnosed with depression. And I remember like just for the longest time, always thinking that I'm like, I would do so much research and I'm like, I don't feel like this is what's going on. And I would bring up, you know, to my uh, psychologist, to my psychiatrist, to like friends and family members. I'm like, you guys, what if, uh, what if what's going on is possibly bipolar disorder? What is, and everyone was like, no, like no way. Because, and I think a lot of that, that no came from is the way that I looked like on the outside. Cause I wasn't really sh- letting people know or see that. I wasn't doing well. I was struggling. I was dealing with things and I wasn't making that known for people to know about. So when I, when that came out, you know, at 19 and I really actually, what ended up happening was I remember I put myself, I put myself into the, it's called the urgent psychiatric center and you go there and then they either choose to transport you to a hospital to receive services or they let you go. So, and I knew I'm like, there is something going on here. And it just felt like, you know, everyone around me was like, no, like, you know, you're doing good. You know, you're working two jobs, you know, you have friends, a relationship. And it just kind of seemed like I was trying to figure out what was going on. And I just kind of started to give up on it. Cause I'm like, okay, you know, everyone else around me thinks this isn't a possibility. So this, I probably don't have this thing. And then I, and then I started questioning, like, what is it then? Like, what is going on? Cause I remember just having, you know, periods of time where I would go from just being extremely, extremely tired and not wanting to do it, just 
losing motivation for the things that I love the most in my life and just out of nowhere. And I'm like, why am I like this? And I would get so mad at myself because I felt like that was something I can control. And I'm like, why can't I just go back to the way I was? And then I would have periods of just like outrageous amounts of energy, like working two jobs, being not, not, not tired at all, just running around, going out, partying, just surrounding myself with people who did not have my best intentions at heart and just really basically not caring about myself anymore. And it was a really dark time in my life. And that's really why I love talking about it because it was so hard for me for so long to even get into this discussion. And now I love it because people come to me and they say, you know, the fact that you were so vulnerable and so transparent with this has helped me get to know you better. It's helped me get to know, you know, my daughter better, my brother, my son, my mom, and whoever it is who might also have struggled with bipolar disorder. Cause it can be, you know, really uh, tricky kind of thing because it, it's, it's not the same for everybody. But I, that's what I love about this is just bringing attention to this and letting people know that it's okay to have these conversations. And, you know, if, if people judge you, then they judge you and that's, that could happen. And, but just knowing that, you know, you have a purpose in what you're doing and the purpose in what I'm doing is trying to one day work to entirely eliminate the stigma surrounding mental health and mental illness. So that way basically these conversations can be as simple as talking about the weather there's no like just super easy straight to the point so that i mean just i mean i i think about that and i imagine you know what would our world look like if there was no stigma at all well and it's interesting too because you know the big thing that with mental disorder you know i have some family members that have suffered suffered with mental illness as well but the thing is, is there was always like, oh, they're mentally ill, so we're going to go stick them in some corner, and we don't want to talk about it. They're just that family member that we don't talk about, and they're on their own. And something as simple as bipolar, you sit there and you think about it and how how that is. And, you know, I, I never really had the idea of what it was, but it's kind of like Jekyll and Hyde, right? You have this high and you have this low, and people don't understand that that doesn't make you a bad person. It's just that you have to deal with things in a different way. And when they can understand it the way that that works, then it's not that big of a deal. And I think that that's big in anything that we do. You know, everyone probably has some form of high and low, and it's just really exaggerated for some people. And if they can deal with it better than, and know that other people are going through it, it's going to help them to understand it better. So I really like what you're doing with that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you on that point when you bring up the, like the Jekyll and Hyde comparison, because, you know, for me, that's really what it felt like for a long time of having these like periods of going from these lows to these highs and then wanting to come out of that. And the reason I think for the longest time I stayed in that place is because I never did the work on myself. You know, I would go to my, I would go to therapy, I would take my medication, you know, I would still be in school, I'd still be working, I'd still, you know, and all these things, but I never really did the work internally and said, you know what, what, what does my life look like right now? Are there habits in my life that are hurting me? Are there things that I'm doing that are contributing to making me feel bad, making me feel sad, making me feel whatever kind of emotion that is um, hurting me? Like, what can I do to change this? And that's really when I started to notice, you know what, th this entire time, um, I, we all are always in control of our lives, but sometimes we, we get into these struggles and these moments when they become so overwhelming and so overpowering that we almost feel like we can't come out of that place. But for me, really discovering that and learning how to actively make the decision to say, what am I adding into my life? What am I taking out of my life? And what am I doing to try to move forward instead of, stay stuck and stay in this mindset of everything is just horrible. Everything sucks. And just, and really changing the way I speak to myself, changing the way I do that and really choosing my inner cheerleader over my inner critic was huge for me too. It's so funny listening to you talk about this because I, I have gone through this, you know, I turned 40 this year and I spent 38 years thinking that same way where I was my biggest critic. And I started to think about a lot of those things and it's, it's the same thing. It's like, I, I spent those 38 years being the critic and now I'm trying to be the positive person and look at the good side and the bright side of things. And, and we sit there and we talk about all these, you know, it's, it's like with social media, 
you're posting something and then someone gives you a negative comment and you and but you have a hundred positive ones and you look at that one negative one and that's the one that just destroys you. That's the one that bothers you the most. And so it, it is. That's the way it is. It's like the way that I'm trying to change that mindset and it sounds like you're working on that too, but it's an everyday struggle. It's something that doesn't just go away, right? Yeah, and I think that's that's the most important part right there to emphasize is that it's an everyday struggle, you guys. It's an everyday commitment. So like he said, you know, you'll be on social media and you'll have a, a photo. And this actually happened to me recently. It's really funny you bring that up because I posted, I posted a photo and it was pretty recent actually. It was the, a picture of me and a picture of me talking about my book and saying I just finished my book. And I had all these comments, like all these positive comments. And then one comment, it was like something about I think my hair or something. And I ended up like looking at that and I was just so focused on like, wait, like, is this person trying to say this? Or like, like, do I look bad? Like, and I'm just like, and I'm, I'm sitting there going in circles. And I remember my boyfriend being like, maybe he meant that in a good way. Like maybe he meant the light coming off your hair is, is a compliment. And you just took that as like the worst thing ever and like deleted it. And I sat there and I'm like, you're right. I'm like, I spent like what, five minutes just now like worried about this comment and like and i'm just like but you can relate that to so many areas in our in our life like when we sit there and we're worried about something and we set a goal for ourselves and we're like once we reach this goal then we'll be happy but then you reach it and you're so like well no now you need this and now you need to do this and then you, we do these things but it but it just feels like we're all we're nothing is ever going to be enough and we're just chasing this almost unattainable idea of reaching happiness or whatever it is you're trying to reach. And I feel like that's the thing to really like normalize is let people know that this is an everyday commitment. You guys like constantly every day trying to work on getting better, trying to look at ourselves and say, you know, what are these things that I do that make me be in a bad, make me feel in a bad place or get me in a bad mood? Do I criticize myself too much? Do I spend too much time, you know, criticizing others, like just looking at ourselves and gaining awareness is so important because that is something I had, I had none, none. I had no awareness at all when I was struggling at my worst. I was just so wrapped up in the struggle that I started to basically look at my life and look at my future and say, well, this is going to go bad because it is. And when you live in that mentality, when you live like that, it's very hard to be happy and to succeed because you're telling yourself you're already going to fail. You're literally setting it in stone. This is not going right. to work. So if we start to shift that, and that's why mindset is such a big part of crooked illness as well. Cause a lot of the stuff I dive into is mental health and my, um, mental health, mental illness as well. But the biggest component is like the mindset piece related to that. And like how that, how, how is that is so helpful in overcoming these moments? Because you know, for me, I can, I, I can, I can say at least for me, if I didn't do any work related to mindset, I think I would still be in not a good place. So. Yeah. And it is, it's a tough thing. It's, it's one of those deals. And I, the funny thing about it is everyone deals with it and, and you either have the positive or you have the negative. And if you let the negative override you, you're going to be in that spot. And so mindset is very important. And that's, I was a teacher before and trying to teach that and coach that and get people to understand that, if you go up, like as in a baseball game, if you go up to the plate with the I'm going to strike out mentality, you're probably going to strike out. But if you go up there with the mentality that I'm going to kill that ball and that guy's got nothing on me, you're going to be more successful. So it is, it's really important. Yes, it is so important. And just, I love that example you just gave because I always love like when people give me examples and like I can visually see like what you're connecting to the words that you're saying, because I feel like for me, you know, being able to really gain this awareness and say, okay, you know, here are things that I do on a daily basis that are hurting me. Like, like literally just surrounding myself with people who tell me like that you suck, that treat you right. badly. And, but you're still, but every day you're still doing the same thing. And you know, that's definitely, that's, I've heard this so many times. Um, just the definition of an insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. Like one day, you know, one day I'll wake up and it'll be different, but you're, you're doing the same things. Right. You're living the same way. You're living in the same habits, same patterns, the same behaviors, but you're expecting somehow for something to shift. And that was my life for the longest time. And, you know, I finally started doing and the biggest thing that really helped me, honestly. Well, one of the biggest things was practicing gratitude, practicing yeah. gratitude. And that is something that I, I struggled with so much because I used to look at that and say, 
like what is writing three things down in a journal that I'm blessed or grateful for going to do for my life. I'm like, that is so like, that's not going to do anything. And I, the reason I was like that is because it was very difficult for me to even identify three things that I was grateful for, blessed for, because I was so focused on everything that was everything in my past that, you know, has hurt me or what all these things that were like negative and just continuing to compound. That was my focus. But when I started to shift my focus to, you know, I have an incredible dad. I have an incredible, like my, my parents, my family, my boyfriend, I I have a home. I'm able to get up every day and breathe and see and walk. And then when you start to do that slowly, as the days go by, more of these things start to come into your mind and you start and end your days on the best foot possible. Instead of getting out of bed and being like, so overwhelmed, so stressed out. I have to go to this job I hate. I have to deal with this. Oh my God. And just getting, getting yourself worked up instead, start your days appreciating. Like, where are you right now? What are you working on? What have you accomplished? Like, look at the places you've been in your life. Look at the things that you've done and like pat yourself on the back. Like be, be your own cheerleader, like be your own hype, hype man, you know, do that. So, and just kind of getting yourself in that headspace, I think is so helpful, especially when you're not you're not doing well because of course we're all, we're all going to have days when we're not happy. We're not in the best place. We're not doing our hundred percent best. And that is fine. That is normal. It's going to happen. There's going to be more of those days, but the thing to uh, remember and to understand is that when the, when those days happen, what are we going to do? Um, and to just remember to be easy on yourself and, Cause I know I used to just like really just like beat myself up and like be so critical and so hard on myself and learning grace with myself was very difficult, but it is something that has been very helpful in helping me actually move forward with my life instead of staying stuck in that place for so long. Yeah. And it's super simple to think positively like that. I think that the hardest part for me was fig- was like you said, you switch that mindset, you think about it. And it's as simple as waking up in the morning and being able to turn the light switch on and have light to see. Some people don't even have electricity. Some people, and, that, and that's kind of what I try to do. I try to take it back to the bare bones of, I have a place to live. I have electricity. I have food in the refrigerator. I have a family that loves me. And if you take it back to that basic point and you start there and build out, you have so much more to be grateful than you do that you're not grateful for. And, and, and that's like the big, the big switch, I think. One of the things that you're doing right now, too, and I want you to kind of talk about it, is you have your free gratitude journal on Facebook. So you talked about gratitude. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I I really just fell in love with it. I fell in love with gratitude to the point where I decided that I wanted to create my own free 28-day gratitude journal. So I did it. I created it, and I did it for the 28 days. So basically what it is, is it's uh there's a section in there where you can download it because i have a facebook page it is called the free 28 day gratitude journal and there's a photo up there it says gratitude attitude and you can download the journal and basically you get up in the morning and you say three things you're grateful for you know three reasons why today's going to be great there's a quote and then you end your days by reflecting on that and saying (laughs) your happiest highlight of the day, um, the best moments of the day, and kind of end, ending the day by writing yourself a love note to yourself, writing something good about yourself, something that you're proud of or something that you really appreciate in yourself. So doing that um, has really just continued to help me stay in this kind of mindset of you know, continuing to work on yourself. So I really decided to put that out there and to make it available to everybody. So I put it up on Facebook and I created this group. And what I like to do in the group is um, sometimes daily, um, weekly, I post photos and questions just to get people thinking about something related to gratitude. So things you're grateful for right now, things you're looking forward to, things you're excited about, you know, things you've accomplished, just kind of like trying to boost people up and make people realize like, wow, you know, there's something right there that I've done or there's something right there that I'm excited about that I didn't even know, or I wasn't even focused on. And now, you know, it just gets you in a better mood and it gets, it just lifts your spirits up. So I'm like, why not, you know, start this and really build up this community. And it's been awesome, you know, being able to uh, just start that and really, you know, see the difference in myself and see the difference in people who have, you know, been using the journal and just been part of the group and contributing and all this stuff. So it's been, been really fun so far. I enjoy it because I don't always post on it because like, but it does, it, it makes you like, I see it when I'm rolling through my scrolling through my page on Facebook, I see the prompt and then it makes me think, and that's exactly what you're trying to do. 
And it makes me think I may not put a comment in there, but I'm thinking at that moment about what you're talking about. And, and I, I really like that because it's kind of like giving someone, like you said, it is a journal prompt to actually reflect and think about what's going on in that day. So besides that, you've got a couple other places we can follow you at. I know you're on Instagram. I know you're, you're kind of all over the place. Do you have a website? Do you have any, where's the best place to find Paris if someone's looking for yes. it? Yes. So the best place you guys where I'm the most active is Instagram and it is at crooked illness. And once you go on my Instagram, there is a link in my bio is my link tree. You can just click that and you, that's all the places you guys can find me. So I have my episodes available on um, Apple podcasts, Spotify, um, also YouTube. I'm also on TikTok, and it's all the links are there. So just go to my Instagram page at crooked illness and interact with me, drop a comment, send me a message, send me a DM. Um, I'm always loving loving to meet new people, connect with new people, have more conversations. So yeah, you can find me there guys. Yeah. And I'll definitely link those in the show notes, make sure that people know where to find you and uh, definitely go ahead and follow Paris because I'm telling you right now, if you have that stigma of mental illness, if you're, if you're struggling with things like that, she's going to help you to kind of get through those, or maybe she can even have a conversation with you, but uh, check that out. So Paris, I wanted to say thanks for taking the time to be on the show today. Um, you know, I know you listen to the podcast, so you know that there's a question coming that, asked, that everyone gets asked. And success is different for every single individual. Your definition of success is different than mine. And it may mean something completely different to the next person. So that question that I have for you is what is the shape of your success? I love it so much. The shape of my success is just continuing to remain within that commitment to work on our, work on yourself, to work on yourself, better yourself, learn more, grow more, make more connections, cultivate more relationships, and just continue to work towards the biggest purpose I have and the biggest mission I have, which is working towards eliminating the stigma associated with mental health, mental health related struggles, mental illness, all of these things to make these conversations more normalized and less stigmatized and just to continue to boost people up, make them feel good and just all around have a, have a better experience here while we're here living life. Well, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I really love that because I think that you are helping people to understand that mental illness is a disease, but it's something that a lot of people go through. So Yes. I want to say thanks for bringing your message to my show today. Thanks for taking the time to be here. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you, Wes. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been amazing chatting with you and just being here and getting into this conversation. Yeah, excited. Hey, well, everyone, that's the end of the show. I wanted to say something here real quick. If, if you're watching this live and you look around, we have all these spaces that we are looking to get advertising on. If you want to sponsor the show, please hit me up. My network, TV PBN, puts this on. They are an awesome producer. We're working on getting shows like this, just like mine, partnerships or paid shows, if you would like to do that. And uh, we would love to have you sponsor the show. Love to get you on our network. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success. All right. All right. I was like, oh, it's starting. I'm not... Okay. So, so we're live now. now. People can hear us. And... Oh, we're live right now? Yep. We're live right now. Yep. So they Hello, can hear us. People. Hello. They just see me, little me, I think. <laughs> right, right, Jeff? This is can the they see mini me? me. Ladies and gentlemen, this I don't is think the so. mini me West Tankersley show. <laughs> <laughs> so they just see little you right there. Yeah, little me. Right, That's Jeff? so funny. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I can't see what you see, but yeah, I think they just see little me. So whatever you see, I think is what they see. Yeah, I like it. Just the logo and me, mini me. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to have a little mini me hanging out. That'd be cool. <laughs> that look, it's so funny because like, I feel like you're about to blow up right now on my screen because you're so small. I feel like you're, I'm like preparing for you to like, just like jump out of the screen. Turn. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's, wow, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, don't forget to turn off your headset when you turn off your headset because I can hear the echo. <laughs> he doesn't like it when I echo, 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 echo. <laughs> Well, it's bad enough listening to the voice come out of my own mouth. Now I got to hear it out of someone else's headset. <laughs> Believe me, it's bad when the voice comes out of your mouth. <laughs> I got to hear it. This is why he time shifts the first 
you know, the countdown. He puts it at the end of the show because well, he doesn't want me in the beginning of the show. He doesn't even uh, like me. Uh, this is the oh, Patreon man. Welcome to the Wes Tankersley Show, <laughs> Shaping Success, featuring Wes Tankersley, the little guy, in four, three, <laughs> two, one. Oh, here we go.